Hello and welcome to episode three of Women's Football Oz Style. I'm Alicia Ferguson. I'm at Reading HQ. This team finished fifth the last two seasons in the WSL, but they want to go better. They want to get a top three finish to guarantee Champions League football. It's Britain, it's raining, so I'm going to go inside and catch up with Jess Fishlock and Angry James. Well, we're in the Reading Women's Gym here. I'm with Jess Fishlock and Angara James. Thank you both for having us. Jess, you're back in the WSL. Good to be back. Um, we've been stalking your social media. Um, <laughs> youngest of five. Uh, where do you come in the five kids? I There's an am... extraordinary family photo that yeah. we have found. Talk us through it. Which one are you? Oh, uh, I think I'm um, channeling your sister Fran with that helmet hair. Yeah, she has Lego, Lego hair. And I am the far right little baby in the, my brother's arms who has the obscene <laughs> ginger haircut. Uh, I have a big stain on my dress. I, love I, that. I can't believe my mother didn't uh, wash that out for the family photo. But yeah. I love it. I love old photos like that. The more embarrassing, the better. We'll come back and we'll chat about Reading. But uh, big news in women's football in Australia is that the Matildas coach has finally been announced. And I got a chance to have a chat to Tony Gustafsson yesterday at the Australian Embassy. How did it feel to be appointed as the new Australian coach? I don't easily get proud for things, but this one I'm really proud of, really proud. Um, I know the um, competition slash candidates that I compete to get this job and, and the fact that the Federation appoints me, I'm very proud and extremely excited. So I can't, I can't, I can't wait to get started. You've had some huge moments in the Olympic Games, in World Cups as an assistant coach. Now got the head coach job. What is it that you're going to bring to this Matildas team? Um, the first thing that comes to mind is passion. I'm a very passionate person, a passionate coach. Um, and I think I share that passion with a lot of people in the Federation uh, and the players that want to create a, a legacy that is bigger than winning. Winning is a natural. You always want to win. Mm. I, I'm a winner. I love to win things. Uh, but it's also winning is a part of something bigger a bigger legacy and I hope I'll bring that passion. Um, I also think from the experience of being in, in big time moments and being in that pressure cooker, every team can win when they play good. But it also means you have to find a way to win when you're not playing good. And that game management piece and the tactical piece and the belief, I do think I have a unique experience there and I hope I can, can put that belief and that game management into the Matildas. A lot of eyes on you at the recent World Cup for your tactics with the US. What type of specific tactical knowledge and expertise are you going to bring to the Matildas? And, and because we did see an amazing amount of flexibility in that US team and a lot of that was attributed to you. Well, thank you. <laughs> we were a team that did it, but I, I love, I call it the green field of chess. I like that. I, I love it. Uh, and for me, it's, I did a couple of, of wrongs in the beginning of my career being over ambitious with players in terms of the tactics it, it's can you explain complex thing in a simple way for players so that we can use the strength of every individual player and this is not about Tony's tactics this is about what do the Matildas have and how can I make sure we take advantage of all the strength of the individual players and get them to play as a team get the chemistry and relationships in there in terms of the tactics I would say I know from experience that titles are won and lost inside 18s and that's the part where we're going to focus a lot, the improvement inside attacking 18 and the defensive 18. First of all, Jess, what do you think of the appointment of Tony for the Matildas? I think it's probably one of the best appointments they could have made. Um, I said from the beginning that I was hopeful that they were bringing somebody who wasn't going to be Australia and I think that those girls in that team need someone who's kind of not being brought up with them, who kind of isn't in that environment that is coming from outside to kind of give a little shake up because I think we're all in agreement here that the Matildas can go on and do great things but they haven't and that question is why and I think that uh, Tony can 
bridge that gap. Angered, he said in that interview about titles won and loss in the 18, that's the defensive and the attacking 18. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think, you know, it's they've got the fundamentals um, and they always have. And I think, like Jess was saying, it's, it's the next step for them now. I think they've been competing at the highest level for so many years, but competing isn't enough now. Can they do the next thing? Um, and I think with Tony's um, move into into the game, I think I think they will do that. Look, he was really impressive, and I think there's exciting times ahead, and this is a huge four years, so thanks both for your support as well. Take yeah, it that. No. We're your second team, right? Yeah. Wales <laughs> first. There you go. You got that here. <laughs> um, so let's talk about Reading. Jess, you're back. You're mm -hmm. back in the country, back mm -hmm. in the WSL. Yeah. How is it? Yeah. Close to home as well, aren't you? Yeah, it's good. I think Reading was a, the, a huge decision for me um, purely because I was going to be close to home, which is what I, what I, which is what I wanted. Um, and also I get to be around my Welshies and I don't think people understand. We're very unique people, uh, we're, we're good people. So it's really nice to come to training every day and be around my culture and my, my girls really. Your girls. And it's not good to have it back. <laughs> <laughs> Angra, I was just gonna ask you that. What's it like having uh, it back? What is it like training nightmare. with Jess? A nightmare. Come no, on, give us the proper, this is the proper <laughs> insight that we want. No, do you know what? Jess has achieved so much in, in her career and I think having that calibre of player coming in, training every day. She sets standards. Um, she, you know, she lives and breathes football, and I think that is something that we needed to bring into the club. She's paying me later, by the way. <laughs> I was gonna say, look how proud she is, standing there like that, yeah, nice and like big grin on her face. Now I've played with Haz for years for Wales, and I came here and I knew straight away. First couple of days, I'm like, come on, Haz, come on, Haz. And I was like, I bet you haven't missed this love. <laughs> I've switched off now. Yeah. Switched off. <laughs> but we talk about that. We talk about this training environment. We talk about these world class players and really pushing each other. That's what you want in an everyday training environment. Absolutely. And I think that's what, what we've lacked, if I'm being mm. honest. I think, you know, the signings that the WSL have made, um, whether they're short term or long term, it is great for the women's game over here. Um, I think, like I've said, it's what, it's what we've lacked. We've got the, the high caliber of players now that are coming over here. Um, setting standards, their experiences that they've been through as footballers, as people, they're bringing all of that to, to the WSL and, and it is going to be, I think, one of the best leagues in the world right now. I keep saying it, if not already. Um, we'll talk about some of one of those big name players in particular coming up, but Reading, finished fifth the last two seasons. What's it looking like for a top three finish? Yeah, I, I don't know, like one of the, one of the kind of big kind of aspirations for me coming to Reading is for them to bridge that gap between fifth to, to third um, and in that top three. And I think with the signings that Kelly's made, um, they absolutely have the calibre of players to do that and the squad to do that. Um, I don't know what it was like before, obviously it has can give us a bit of insight into that. But for me, when I look at our squad and I look at our players, I don't question the, the, the quality and, you know, can we? I absolutely believe that we can. It's just, can we as a team, can we get the mentality, can we get the belief, can we come together enough to do that? Because that's what it will take. It, that, you know, the, you can talk about football and all that all you want. It's bigger than that, as you know, Tony just said. It is bigger than that, and it'll be up to us to bridge that gap. I think th the main thing this, this year with the players that Kelly have brought in, we've brought in winners. We've brought in Jess, who's won a lot. We've brought in Mitch. We've brought in Dan Carter, won stuff at Arsenal. Diana, who's won stuff at Chelsea, and I think that's what we've missed. We've missed, you know, real winners being around the place, demanding, demanding standards every day, not just turning up on a Sunday to, to play a game, but demanding it every day. And I think that's, that's where we're getting to now. And, you know, it's, it's great to be a part of the club moving forward. It's exciting time. Like, that's exciting, isn't it? When you can see that progress and you've been away and you've come back. Let's just touch on game on the weekend. West Ham. Now, they got a little bit of a shellacking uh, recently. <laughs> As did um, we. Haven't we all? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. That's true. There's been some big scores. <laughs> it's great to watch as a, as a fan, all the goals going in. What are you expecting from West Ham, playing them away from home? I, after that last game, I expect them to be probably a little bit more... Um, humble and not so naive mm. um, I felt that they were very naive defensively before. they struggled didn't they I mean Jilly getting sent off quite early didn't help yeah I don't expect them to be as open or as um, yeah like I say naive with regards to you know such a high line um, etc etc 
you know, I know BD, I he'll look at exactly what we play, how we play, that we play diamond, and I think he will um, try and set up to frustrate that. You know, I think coming off the back of a thumping, um, you're going to want to knock a seed goals at the end of the day, and I think that we're going to have to do a very good job of trying to break down a far more mm. organised West Ham. Yeah, yeah absolutely. BD won't want that happening again. Um, I mean, Anger, there's some great players in that West Ham team, a couple of Aussies as well. I'm actually... Um, are you looking forward to seeing this one come up against Emily Van Egmond? Because, you know, those two can be quite feisty. I can't wait to watch this. I know, I've heard a few, <laughs> a few instances, haven't I? That, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think that's what the WSL is now. I think, you know, we're going to be playing West Ham, who have, who have brought in some great signings themselves. Um, but we're going to expect they have, to do, they have to do more on Sunday. Um, what and do you have to do that, Anger? We've spoken about West Ham, and, but what do you need to do? And I, I was going to say, Jess, I really appreciate, you know, everyone's always seems to be a little bit uh, secretive about formation and that, but no one really changes it that much during the season, do they? And you said you play a diamond. Yeah. Everyone knows that. That's yeah. how we go. So what do you yeah. need to do to get past West Ham? We've worked on stuff this week. Um, we've looked at, at West Ham and, you know, the areas that we can exploit. Um, we've worked really hard this week and, you know, hopefully me and Jess will get a bit more of the ball than, than what we've been <laughs> seeing um, and not just defending. But no, it'll be, it'll be a tough game. But like, like Jess said, we play a diamond. I think everyone knows that. Um, but if, if we get to the point where we're that good at it, then no one can stop us. And I think that's where we've got to get to now. We're, you know, we're working hard each day to try and make sure that we get every element right in that diamond shape. Jess, you looking forward to um, coming up against him? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Fireworks? I've played Fireworks, against her a, a load of times in the WWE. I love it. I feel like I kind of can close you know my eyes and I know Emily's game is off the back Absolutely. of my hand. Um, but at this point, it's going to be interesting because you're going to have two different formations going at each other and it's going to be which formation can exploit the other one better and faster and... We'll go from there, but yeah, if, if you're watching them, I'm not worried about you, babes. <laughs> you that there. Okay, another game of the weekend, Man City v Spurs. One of the bigger name signings that's come into the WSL, Alex Morgan, was freezing her little tush off in the FA Cup on the weekend. We're going to see her play, surely, this weekend. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think she'll be eager to play, especially against City. I think Spurs need her as well. Let's let's be real here. I think they've played like three games now, scored one goal. That goal was an was an own goal. You know they're lacking um, up top, and she's going to bring them. Hopefully, you know everything that they kind of need. A world class striker. Anger, what do you think about all these signings coming into the league? There's been you know difference of opinion of whether it's a positive or negative, that they're coming in for a short space of time. But surely some of that quality has to be good for the league. The profile as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we touched on before, you know, you're seeing Alex Morgan in Trafalgar Square on the big screen. That's never happened before. That's never happened in women's football. Um, so the exposure that, that we are getting now, um, you know, the amount of media coverage that there is in the game, it's because the la the these big players that are coming to, to our league to, you know, to compete and to set, set standards, to change the game here, because quite frankly, it's been, you know, it's on a par for so many years now and you know I really think that bringing the likes of Alex Morgan um, some others um, this one is that what you is that what you this one some <laughs> others, yeah. you know. she was waiting for you to name check her you know that I know like that. I know um, no it will change the game and I just hope you know that um, we continue to to go in the right direction I mean, it's huge players in the WSL for this season. It's absolutely amazing for the league. Um, we'll come back with Angrad and Jess after Michelle Escobar's social media roundup. Thanks, Ish. As we touched on earlier, it's been a huge week for the Aussies with the announcement of new Matildas coach Tony Gustafsson. The team has welcomed him with open arms. Steph Catley, Sam Kerr and Kaya Simon can't wait to get to work with the former USA assistant coach. Hayley Razzo is heading to Wembley following Everton's 3-0 semi-final victory over Birmingham in the FA Cup. 
Two-time World Cup winner and Tottenham's latest signing, Alex Morgan, is excited to reunite with her Orlando teammate, Alana Kennedy. I'm really good friends with Alana and Shalina. We're all pretty excited because we get along really well. I love the way that they play, so I'm just looking forward to getting on the field with them again. Elsewhere in Europe, Ellie Carpenter scored her first goal for Lyon. Her Matildas teammates Kaya and Emily Gelnick were among the many to congratulate her, as well as Socceroo Jamie McLaren. Thanks, Michelle. Well, Ellie Carpenter scoring that goal on the weekend. Jess, your old club, tell us about I mean, I, Again, I think it's great for us as a nation to have one of our players playing for one of the best women's team in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, I think the move for Ellie to go to Lyon was, was fantastic for her. And the reason, the reason I think that is because everyone talks about Ellie having the physical attributes that are phenomenal. And, you know, she does have that. I watched her. But at Lyon, Ellie will learn um, the football side of the game. It will be drilled into her every single training session. Where's your positioning? Where's your touch taking you? Do you understand the tactics? That will be the, her priority. It won't be that she's so, so she's so physically capable. And that will change Ellie's game for the good. Which only means great things, again, for the national team. I think it's phenomenal. We're, we'll move on to the Spanish league, uh, La Liga Femenino. It's the first ever El Clasico in women's football in Spain. Anger, what do you think, what do you think about Real Madrid coming into the fold? Yeah, it's great. I think, um, you know, there's Real Madrid, there's Man United that have come in over here. I think the game in Spain is changing. Um, I think it's what was needed over there. It was, you know, it's competitive, but it's taken it to the next level now that, you know, I know so many players that, that one, you know, that phone call to say, can I go to Real Madrid? Um, <laughs> are, you, are you pointing at, are you pointing at this one again? <laughs> I, was, I, was going, I thought you were pointing at Jess again, just like that. <laughs> Get the agent on the line. <laughs> no, so it's great for Spanish football and, you know, it'll only be great for, for the national team as well moving forward. Okay, so we've also got some questions from the fans for you both. Jess, you did a little call to action yesterday. You struggled with the name of the show, didn't you? How did you get women's football Oz style? Well, I was saying Aussie because that's what everybody says, but apparently Aussie is unacceptable. <laughs> Sorry. Jess has a problem with the show, name of the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first one is, uh, this one's for you, Jess. So this is at 191219N. What did you learn from your time at the rain? I mean, you're still there. You're going I'm back still there. still there. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what have you learned during your time at the Rain? Let's rephrase Do you know that. one of the kind of biggest things I've learned um, being at the Rain is that, you know, in women's football, you're never at a club, really, for as long as I've been at the Rain. It'll be my eighth year now. Next year, it'll be my ninth year. You're nearly in for a long service league. You know, leave there, you know that. The, um, <laughs> the ebbs and flows of it, you know, the, the being on top of the world and then being like really bad and then like finding your way back up has been such a learning curve you know I mean we were the one of the best teams in the world for a, for a few years and then well you know we struggled then to to hold that level and then we're trying to get there again and being a part of that you know everyone thinks being a being an athlete is just like a pro athlete is the best thing in the world they have no idea how hard it is to mentally sustain it day in day out it's just out. tiring isn't it it's so tiring <laughs> it i mean you don't want to sound like you're no. moaning or anything <laughs> it, you live your life sore and tired yeah that's your existence. I'm I mean, so loving every minute of it. Yeah. But it's, it's, you know, we wouldn't have it any other no, way. No, but that, that for me is what I've really loved about Rain is going through those moments with a group, with, you know, friends like Lulu is my best friend, Lulu Barnes, going through that like with, with this club um, and still wanting to keep going back. That's what I love about it. Like it truly does have my whole heart. So, yeah, it's great stuff. I mean, in, and you're going back there, aren't you? When are you yeah. going back? When are you heading back? February 28th. All oh, right. Are you counting down the days? <laughs> 9 uh, a.m. in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> counting down the days. Angra, this one's for you at Ben.Mori7. What is your favourite football memory? Ooh, Ooh. Good question. Um, I would probably say putting on the Welsh shirt. It always, yeah. Power to the Welshies. There Could I just say your kit the other day was an Aussie kit? No, it wasn't. Come it on, was we're your, second, though, we're your, it? It we're your second team. It's true, yeah, that's true. The <laughs> kit Sorry, was, it was nice, weren't Putting it? Putting on the Welsh kit, what does it mean to you to play for Wales? Honestly, it means everything. I think um, us Welshies, it's, it's all the same. I think, you know, we've been brought up passionate um, and anything will give 100% every game. 
um, as a bare minimum. And I think you can see that in our performances. Um, singing the anthem, the way we sing it, I've not experienced any other nation sing it the same. It's, you know, playing for our country, it, it means everything. Um, and I couldn't think of a prouder moment, really. Oh, that, that gave you goosebumps hearing about that. <laughs> it's really sweet. So let's talk about Wales then. Um, had a qualifier against Norway. Narrowly lost that. Never been to a major tournament. There's a reasonably big Euros um, coming up. Thoughts? This is the time, right? <sighs> yeah, it kind of has to be, really. Um, after this one, I think we're losing a lot of our experienced players, probably, um, unless we somehow manage to stay on, which is will be incredible. But... Yeah, look, you know, our game against Norway the other day, uh, I'm still not over it, to be honest with you, because they're, they're a phenomenal team. They're, you know, they're, they are massive for the Euros to win it, I think, in my opinion. And the Aussies know all about the Norwegians. Sorry to bring that back up. But, Thanks, um, mate. Cheers for that, Jess. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they're a phenomenal team. And, you know, it was 1-0, and we had, we had two penalty shouts. They're for sure penalties. And, you know, we really deserved something from the game. I'm not saying we deserved it. Like, we should have come away from that game with something and you don't say that much against teams like that and then that would have probably been enough to secure us for the Euros at this point and so it's really 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 hard to take but we do have them again in three weeks. Question, are we going to see Wales at the Euros? Yes. yes. That's all we wanted to know, of course we're going to see you <laughs> at the Euros. Can you imagine winning on English soil? That would be nice. Oh, you'd have a national holiday. Against England. It, Wembley. Wait, wait. Uh, what? Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Brilliant. <laughs> Set it up. Girls, that's all we have time for, Angara. Jess, thank you so much. Apparently, you've got some other show later on this afternoon, right? You're just bouncing around, like, we from just broadcaster to broadcaster. Not as good, though. Not, not, as good. <laughs> not as good. Really appreciate you having us. Thanks, and all the best for the season. Thank you so much. Thank you.